All right. So today I want to talk about how I think about heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Now, for many patients who are in the hospital getting unfractionated heparin, this is a question that comes up all the time. And most of the time, people will knee-jerk and just send anti-heparin PF4 testing. But you really don't want to do that because the anti-heparin PF4 panel is pretty sensitive. And so there's a high rate of false positives. And you want to make sure that you do not erroneously get a false positive test that could subject your patient to an anticoagulant that actually increases their risk of bleeding. And for that reason, you really need to think carefully about a patient that you're diagnosing with HIT. Okay, so heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, HIT, HIT. So why are we worried about HIT? Because the risk of thrombosis in a patient who has heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is pretty high. It's at least 50%. And the thrombosis can be fatal. So you don't want to miss HIT. That being said, I think in general, we do a good job of looking for HIT. So now we are actually kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum where we're mostly not missing HIT, where we're kind of over-treating HIT. So let's think about it. So the first thing you want to do is first of all, you're going to have clinical suspicion. And usually that happens in an inpatient who has thrombocytopenia. Usually it can also happen in the outpatient setting and you want to be on the look for it. So then in anybody presenting with a new thrombocytopenia, you do want to take a medication history and make sure that the patient has not been exposed to heparin. Okay. So the patient has a prior history of heparin exposure or maybe ongoing if they're in the hospital the first thing you want to do, because usually you're asking the question because the patient has thrombocytopenia, the first thing you want to do is to ask the question, what is the pretest probability? So you haven't sent the antiheparin PF4 yet. You're still in the place where you're asking, what is the likelihood that this patient has hit? So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to calculate the pretest probability. And there are a number of scores out there. The one that is more commonly used and the one that I tend to use is the four T score. And so the four T's is four T's. It talks about the timing of the thrombocytopenia. It talks about the extent of the thrombocytopenia. So how low do the platelets get? It talks about thrombosis happening. And then it also talks about other potential causes. Okay. So it's the timing what is the time frame for which the thrombocytopenia occurred? It talks about the extent of the thrombocytopenia. So how low did the platelets go? It talks about thrombosis. Is there new or progressive thrombosis? And it talks about other, are there other possible or definite causes of thrombocytopenia? Now, I will tell you that you should look up a calculator and you should calculate the pretest probability, but it will involve you thinking about the patient, what was the timing of their exposure to heparin and what is the sequelae they've had other than their thrombocytopenia, whether a new blood clot was documented or not. So definitely calculate the 4T score. But once you've calculated the 4T score, the next step is to figure out, is it a low, moderate, or high pretest probability? Now, this is really important because if it's a low pretest probability, you shouldn't send the test. You shouldn't send the test because there is a really high risk of a false positive result. And you want to make sure that you do not subject a patient who shouldn't be on a direct thrombin inhibitor to direct thrombin inhibitor use because they have a higher risk of bleeding, especially if they are thrombocytopenic, because it tells you that probably their thrombocytopenia is due to something else. You should go figure it out rather than putting them on a direct thrombin inhibitor. So you really want to figure out pretest probability because if the pretest probability is low, so if the score is zero to three, then it tells you that it's so much less likely to be hit, it's less than 5% chance that the patient has hit, okay? All right, now, if the pretest probability is moderate, that's helpful. You wanna get the anti-heparin PF4 because you're not sure. And the anti-heparin PF4 panel is gonna help you make a decision one way or the other, okay? So if you start out with a low pretest probability, you don't need the test, but if you're moderate, then you should get the anti-heparin PF4. If you have a high pretest probability where you feel pretty certain that this is going to be hit no matter what, you still send the test. And that's really important because now you know, and in getting the pretest probability, what it does is it helps you interpret the anti heparin PF4 panel when you get it. Okay. So let's say you get a negative anti heparin PF4 panel. If you started out with a low pretest probability, you shouldn't have sent the test but you did anyway, and it's negative, wow, you can feel confident that the person doesn't have hit because it's a very sensitive test. 
And if it's negative and the pretest probability was low, the person doesn't have hit. Sometimes I have teams who are like, I don't care. This patient has hit. I'm going to do the SRA. That's not a good use of resources. It means you should be looking for something else. If a person has a low pretest probability and a negative antiheparin PF4, they probably do not have hit. You should find the other reason why they have a thrombocytopenia. Okay. If it's negative, but the person had a moderate pretest probability, then you're done with your testing. You're like, well, we weren't sure. And now we've done the heparin PF4 testing and it's negative. This person probably doesn't have hit. And you can stop there and feel confident that even though you had moderate pretest probability, the test was negative. It's unlikely that the person has hit. Now, if you had a high pretest probability and the test is negative, you're kind of confused. Because you're like, wait a minute, I was so sure this would be a slam dunk diagnosis. I was so sure. And the antiheparin PF4 surprised me. Then in those patients, it is reasonable to get a serotonin release assay because you were surprised by the result of the antiheparin PF4 in a patient in whom your suspicion was super high. In those patients, you should get a serotonin release assay to kind of help you make the final decision. Okay, so that's where the antiheparin PF4 panel is negative in the three scenarios of low, moderate, or high pretest probability. Let's talk about when the antiheparin PF4 testing is positive. Okay, so let's say it's positive and you start it first with a low pretest probability. Positive antiheparin PF4 panel, low pretest probability. So you kind of shouldn't have sent the test because you started with a low pretest probability, but you did. And now it's positive. It's most likely to be a false positive. Honestly, it really is. But now you're kind of stuck because you were surprised. So anytime you're surprised by the antiheparin PF4 result, either it was you expected it to be negative and it wasn't, or you expected it to be positive and it wasn't, then the SRA makes sense because it's kind of like the final decider. Okay, so you start out with a low pretest probability. You shouldn't have sent the test, but you did. You got a positive result. It's probably a false positive. You're going to go ahead and you're going to send an SRA just to help to clarify the question. If you start out with a moderate pretest probability and you ended up with a positive antiheparin PF4 panel, then you send an SRA because you're still not sure. You go from a 10% likelihood of having hit in the moderate pretest probability to about a 50% likelihood when you have the antiheparin PF4 panel turn positive. So you do want to send the SRA to help you make a final diagnosis. Now, here's the caveat. For a person who's positive, who had a high pretest probability, you were so sure when you did the pretest probability that this patient has hit, I'm convinced that this patient has hit. And then you have the antiheparin PF4 levels and they are high, that patient has hit. You don't need to send the SRA because you're not gonna change your management based on the SRA. The SRA is a confirmatory test and please send it if you need to, but there is the possibility of SRE negative hit. For that reason, it is really a clinical diagnosis. If you have a high pretest probability and the test result is positive, then that is your clinical diagnosis. And you can do further testing if you wish, but it shouldn't change your management of the patient. Okay. All right. So that's the way in which I interpret the antiheparin PF4 panel. Of course, if you're suspicious for a hit, you should be treating the patient with a non-heparin anticoagulant anyway while you're waiting for these results to come back. But you really want to be thoughtful about it because direct thrombin inhibitors can cause patients to bleed a lot. And in patients who are pretty thrombocytopenic, if they don't have hit, you're going to make them bleed and you want to avoid that if you can. But if they have hit, you certainly want to treat them because treating them is what's going to help their platelet counts recover and it's going to hopefully avoid any thrombotic event or a major consequence of death. So you want to make sure that you're thinking carefully and appropriately about these patients. All right, that's it. That's how I think about the anti-heparin PF4 testing. If you have any thoughts about other things that I could talk to you about, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.